In this Godot tutorial, I'll be teaching you how not to do things. Are you serious? Yes, I'm absolutely serious. So by the title, you probably figured out we're going to be sorting and hashing passwords today so we can securely store them on the database of our server. So today I'm going to be teaching you a couple of bad practices. And before we can really get into why I chose to do so, or, or basically how, why I'm forced to do that, let's first dive into hashing and well, various types of hashing and where which types of hashing is being used. There are two types of hashing functions that are relevant to this topic. On one hand, we have the slow hashing functions, and on the other hand, the fast hashing functions. And their name pretty much implies how they execute and what the difference between the two is. One executes fast, the other one intentionally slow. So before we can determine which of the two types will be best for hashing our passwords, we have to consider what we're actually trying to secure from. And we are securing this database by hashing the passwords from brute force attacks. So what is a brute force attack? A brute force attack starts with somebody gaining access to your server and being able to download or copy or read the user and password database that you have on your server. Now, these passwords are not going to be useful as they will be hashed. However, a hacker could brute force the hash open and thereby revealing your password. The way he does that is basically there's this long ass list of let's say a million or two million passwords that are very common in the world because People are pretty bad at choosing passwords. Um, and he's just basically just gonna run that through the same hashing function that we have used to create the hash in the first place. And he's gonna look for a match. And as soon as he found the match, then he knows the original input that created that hash and therefore he knows your password. Now, once that list of 1 million or 2 million uh, options or common passwords is exhausted, you could still continue to simply try more options with more randomized values. And at some point he will find it. The only question is how long? And that's really where the fast and the slow come, come into play. So let's take the SHA256 algorithm. It's an algorithm that's in, integrated into GGScript. We've used it before, uh, so I thought it would be a good one to, um, to use as an example. Let's say we have a seven character password. And let's say we only use lowercase. That means there's 26 options, the alphabet, per character. And that means we have 26 to the power of seven total options for our password, which would be a billion. Some quick math for you. Um, now you'll be surprised maybe to hear that a not even super high tech, but a reasonably modern GPU set up with the right script and in the right environment, not even that difficult to do, can test or hash about 2 million passwords per second of the SHA256 uh, hashing function. Um, that's quite a lot. And it means it takes about 2000 seconds to find your password. And yeah, I know that 2 million times 2,000 doesn't make 8 billion, but statistically, he will only have to test the first 50% because statistically, your password will be 50% um, of the time in the first 50% of the passwords he tests, especially if your password is made out of normal words that can be found in a dictionary or even very standard passwords, then he will have it even much faster. So with 2,000 seconds, the password is known in about 33 minutes, that is worrying. And that's why we have also got the slow hashing functions. The slow hashing functions are intentionally slow. And instead of a couple of million of these per second, they'll only be able to couple uh, maybe one, two, three, even maybe a dozen. And that of course is going to seriously increase the amount of time necessary before they have a positive ha hashing um, hit basically. So preferably we use the slow hashing functions for our passwords. The only problem is they are not integrated in GDScript. GDScript only has fast hashing functions and not the integration that you see in C++ or C Sharp or Python for the slow hashing functions. So that puts me as a creator that is trying to teach you best practices in a little bit of a dilemma. Do I skip this tutorial? No. Do I introduce all kinds of plugins and add-ons or external services and make this tutorial even more complex than it already is? Well, I don't prefer that because I basically promise you 100% GD script code multiplayer thing. So I'm really only left with the third option. That's just to teach you best, uh, best, bad, bad practices, not best practices. Ooh, watch out. So what I strongly advise you to do is to take these teachings with a grain of salt and mostly learn from what I've just explained to you about brute force attack and how we can counter them and to 
keep the patch notes of Go.4.0, 4.1, 4.2, keep a close eye on them so that as soon as Go has implemented something like Argon 2 or vScript, um, that we can replace this little piece of code I'll be teaching you today for something that is tried and tested and known to be a good password hash. So that's basically uh, the message that I got for you to, uh, to send you off with. Uh, I think I talked long enough and uh, for this introduction and uh, let's get coding. So we're starting the code off at the authentication server. So in the authenticate script. On here, we have created the create account function in the last tutorial. And I've told you in the last tutorial, we'll be changing some of that code to ensure we're hashing and sorting the password. As you can see, I've changed this part of the code. These three lines are different than the one line of code you're going to be having in your project if you're following along. In your project, it said player data, player ID is username, password is password instead of hashed password because we were taking this input from the client and it didn't have the salt, of course. What we're doing now is now we're storing the hashed password we defined up here and the salt that we have defined up there. For the salt, we're gonna generate the salt. And salt is nothing more than a random string of characters that we're gonna be adding on top of the password. And we do that so that when two users have the same password, if we wouldn't be salting it, and we would only be hashing the password, these players are gonna have the same hash outcome. Because of course, the same input is the same outcome. Now, if somebody were to try and brute force our user and password database, and he would have a hit on one of the hashes, he could then check the entire database of all the users to see if there's another user with exactly the same hash. And if that's the case, that means that both of these users have the same password, and instead of one account, he has hacked two accounts at the same time, or three, or four, or five. By using these salts, we are no longer susceptible to such attacks because we have a random standard string that is unique to every player added on top of the password. So when we create a new account, we also have to create a new salt for that player because that's unique to the player. That salt doesn't have to be secret. In fact, it's gonna be stored just next to the password on the user database. For the salt, we're generating the salt and for that, we pretty much use exactly the same function as we did for the network token verification in tutorial number five or six. Um, so we're simply gonna take a random integer after we have randomized the seed of the engine and we're just gonna use that SHA256 hashing function function to get a completely random 64 character long string. Well, we'll print that so we can see what's going on. I've got a couple of prints left and right so I can demonstrate to you how this actually works. So next up, once we've got the salt, we're gonna use the password provided by the player together with the salt that we just generated. And we're gonna put that into the generate hashed password to create our hashed password. That is right here. And there's a couple of things I do in here that I'll explain one by one. First, we are printing the system time up and down. I'm only doing that for demonstration to you right now. You can delete those lines out of it once you're done. We are going to be uh, taking that password that came down into the generate hash password. Um, we are gonna be saving that right here. Then we determine how many rounds we are going to be hashing it because Instead of having one slow hashing function, I'm gonna be using a fast hashing function, again, that SHA256, and we're just gonna be doing it many times over and over and over and over again, re-adding the salt every single time until it is slow. And that sounds like, well, I just made it up out of nowhere. Well, actually, I didn't. Repeating that hash over and over and over again is actually one of the core concepts of B script, uh, one of the slow hashing algorithms. So I am taking a, a tried and tested practice out of one of the slow hashing algorithms and I'm implying it and making the function myself. So it's not like completely pulled out of thin air. Uh, it does have like a scientific basing on it, but it's just not best practice to create a function yourself. Normally you would just use a stamped um, uh, uh, tried and tested implementation. So back to the code. We're determining how many rounds we're gonna be doing over and over again. And this basically function says power two to the power of three, which is of course eight. I'll be using two to the power of 18 later on. So we're gonna be doing this hash 262,000 times over again. And if you want this to be longer, you just make two to the power of 19 and suddenly it's uh, more than half a million. But for now, we'll just use 18. Then while rounds is um, bigger than zero, uh, we're gonna be running this while loop, and this while loop is, like I said, it's gonna run 260,000 times. 
So we're going to be taking that hashed password, we add the salt on, on top of it, so that makes 128 characters. We put it through the hashing function, thereby it becomes 64 characters again, and then we just go again, then we add the salt, and we go again, then we add the salt, and we go again, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So once that is all done, and the rounds are finished, we're going to print that final hash, we print that operating time so we can see how long it takes, and there we have our hashed password. Then, of course, instead of just saving the password uh, bare and make it, we're going to be saving the hashed password, and we'll save the salt along for, with it because we're going to need the salt the player makes when the player makes a login attempt. So, how does it all work? You might be wondering. Well, I got a little bit of a test set up here, so I'm not going to actually be trying logging in. Just under the ready function, when I start the authentication server up, I've defined a salt. This is a salt I generated um, previously, and I'm going to be pushing this is my password uh, with an underscore in between 88 exclamation mark as my password. So now when I press play, right here in the output, you can see that the authentication server started. Um, and this is my password. I have forgotten one thing. I need to remove the comment under the print. Here we go again. And here you can see that every round, the password or the hash of that password is completely different because every time we take the output of the previous round, we add the salt on top of it, which stays the same. And therefore the output is different, 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 different until we finally have our final hash. And that will be the password we're actually storing. So here we got the time. This is the timestamp. And the last three numbers are the milliseconds. So this is 129 milliseconds. And right here we got 144 milliseconds. So that is 15 milliseconds for eight rounds. But this print takes up a lot of processing power. So if I remove this print right here from the function and we'll run it now, you can now see that this is 202 and it's 205. So we went from 15 milliseconds to three milliseconds just because we're not printing that output anymore. So now if you were to ask me like, how long does it take to do 262,000 times? Well, we'll just change the 18 here. We'll replay this code and we'll see that now we got here five seconds and 838 milliseconds. And here we got six seconds. 574. So this um, execution took about 0 0.7 seconds on my machine. So that means he, the hacker, if he were to do this or have to do this through a, a brute force attack, he would be able to test about two passwords per second. And that is, of course, much less than two million passwords per second. Um, now, my system might not be optimized for this. Um, so it could be that the hacker is considerably faster. But one thing we can be sure of is that we have made it 262 thousand times slower than it would have otherwise taken. But we're not completely done yet because now we have a hashed password in our database, but we're still comparing that hashed password to the naked password once we authenticate a player on a login attempt. So we have to change that code as well. That code is on the same script, so we can just stay on the authentication server. We scroll up a little bit to our authenticate player function, which we coded in episode number three. And here we have, if the player, the username doesn't exist, we have a false login. And here we test if the password that was provided by the player is equal to the password, which will of course now always be false because we are matching naked versus hashed password. So we're gonna change this if else if else statement and we're gonna split them up into two if statements, like so. We first check if the username exists, that stays the same. But if the username does exist, we're now going to be retrieving the salt. We can only retrieve the salt once we have verified that that username exists, because otherwise we're gonna be looking for a key in a dictionary that isn't existing and that of course throws an error. So we retrieve the salt from the player data where we stored it, and then we're gonna be using the password provided in this function to the generate hash password with the retrieve salt. So that brings us into the same function as I just explained, and we're just gonna be uh, basically hashing the password provided by the player. Now, as we have done that, we can now compare that hashed password with the password that we have in our database. Thereby, we are fixing that matching up again. Now, of course, we can only do this if the user is known and by splitting that if else if else statement into two if statements, we have to tap this one along that it only runs under else. And of course, this randomized uh, network verification token uh, process only needs to run if the result is true. So we're going to tap this or indent this one forward as well. So now we have fixed our login sequence. And of course, we just can return the results as per normal to the player.
Now, there's one more thing that I want to change because right now in the first round, once we start hashing the password, we still have the naked password. So the first attempt of hashing is going to just take the normal password. There's not really anything wrong with that. But now that we're busy with all this hashing anyway, it may not be a bad idea that the server is never going to be receiving the naked password at all. It's not very common that once we've already implemented the SSL encryption over the line that there's going to be any issue with it. But if we can make sure that the server never really knows that password, that's always better than when it is available here. So allow me to take you with me really quick to the client side of things. I'm right here on the gateway script of the client. And here we have the request for login and the request for create account. And instead of pushing the password here, you can see that I've done the first hash, the first round, let's say, although there's no salt added here yet, we have already pushed a hashed value to the server. So the server is now not gonna be receiving a naked password. The server is gonna be receiving a 64 character long um, uh, random string based on the password of the player. So with this, we have a complete hashing function that is totally not best practice. I can't state that enough. I know I'm uh, basically just sort of undermining my own believability as a creator and a tutorial and a developer. As a tutorial, yeah, as a tutorial, why not? Why not? It's, it's a crazy episode anyway. So with this, I think we're done. That was it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget that little bell icon to make sure that you don't miss out on the next video. In the next couple of tutorials, we're gonna get into something that I know a lot of you have been looking forward to. We're finally going to be syncing up players and the world. So stay tuned for those tutorials. I'll see you then. Until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.